Hello, I'm Douglas Brody. I'm the lead fund manager at the Edinburgh Worldwide Investment Trust here at Bailey Gifford. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I was going to split this webinar up into three sections. Uh, firstly, a reminder around what we seek to offer uh, within the EWIT, uh, some reflections upon the current year, uh, and then capturing some portfolio changes, uh, letting you know what we've been up to and, and progress at some of the companies. So for Edinburgh Worldwide Investment Trust, our investment philosophy is one where we seek ambitious, problem-solving companies with what we believe to be excellent long-term growth potential. Now, by trying to identify these companies earlier, uh, we seek to benefit from growth during the most dynamic phase of a company's life cycle, uh, really retain that ownership of these businesses as they grow and as they thrive, uh, really driving uh, change in their respective industries over the subsequent years. And it's an approach that requires patience, uh, a genuine long-term mindset, uh, and a recognition that progress in, in young companies is rarely linear. It's also an approach that accepts that some ideas will ultimately not work. Uh, some will fall short of our aspirations, but some companies, and it will undoubtedly be the minority, uh, will end up surprising and delighting their initial commercial traction, opening up new growth avenues that will likely make our original hypothesis actually look quite feeble. Uh, and the wide range of outcomes can clearly be evidenced in the long-term asymmetry of returns chart uh, that we show here for EWIT. Uh, it's an extreme dispersion uh, that we actively want uh, EWIT's long-term returns to be molded by. Uh, resolving those deep long-term winners from the losers and the also rands uh, does require that time and that patience that I talk about. Uh, and I think really attempting to take the readout on that portfolio progress at anything less than five years probably will not tell you very much. Uh, there will undoubtedly be periods like the last year uh, where we will be out of sync uh, with the prevailing narrative within stock markets. And that stock market narrative that I allude to has been very extreme actually the past year uh, and at times very frenetic. Uh, we've seen the stock market have to wrestle with a world that's trying to get back to normal uh, post the pandemic, uh, the overhang of new virus variants, uh, the, uh, the, the impact and fairly abrupt changes in the Chinese regulatory backdrop. It, it's been quite a potent mix that means that those typical oscillations from optimism to fear have probably been more pronounced than usual. And I think that theme and that backdrop is captured really over the summer months of 2021 uh, during the pandemic, where many companies were actually annualizing that immediate impact of when the pandemic hit. Uh, and for some companies that represented a real recovery type situation, uh, but several of our companies, especially those that were natural beneficiaries of, of the pandemic type environment, businesses like Ocado, uh, businesses like Teladoc doing telemedicine, uh, this period has been one where the comparator has actually been much tougher. Now, fundamentally, we are much more intrigued about how, how the fortunes of these businesses have been transformed on a multi-year, if not actually a multi-decade view. And we think annualizing extreme base effects it can get the stock market very excited, but it tends to tell you very little about the real long-term progress these companies are making. And in the specific cases of Teladoc and Ocado, uh, we think that long-term relevance is, is where the companies are increasingly being overlooked by the stock market. And moving to the portfolio, uh, in the year we would highlight uh, the significant progress made at several of the, the holdings that we originally owned for the trust in an unlisted capacity. Uh, we've really seen firsthand during the pandemic just how relevant the utility of real-time DNA sequencing technology being developed uh, by Oxford Nanopore uh, has been. Uh, and as the trust's uh, original private company investment back in 2015, uh, we're very pleased to see that company now progress to the, to the next chapter in its listing on the London Stock Exchange. And I think with both medicine and that, that vast opportunity in applied genomics, increasingly wanting practical, relevant answers, not just uh, genetic code, uh, we think the future looks very bright for, for Oxford Nanopore. And while still pre-commercial, uh, we've been pleased with the development and progress at QuantumScape, a, a developer of solid state uh, battery technologies, and, and likewise at SciQuantum, a really intriguing company looking to make quantum computing a practical reality through the use of optical-based chips. In the listed sphere, we, we've seen Tesla increasingly reinforce its advantages and mindshare in that electrification and automation of transportation. Uh, and we've also been very intrigued by progress uh, made a custom enzyme manufacturer, Cadexis, uh, most recently captured through their enzyme synthesis uh, pathways being uh, part of the manufacture of coronavirus uh, antivirals uh, that we hope will soon be uh, available. 
Of the new ideas added to the trust during the year, we think it's worth highlighting a few just to sort of uh, allude to where our analytical radar or the team has been pointing. Uh, so in a company called JFrog, uh, they, they, they develop uh, software um, to help IT developers manage their libraries of software and code and really automates the deployment of that code across different environments. Essentially, it makes it easier and faster and cheaper uh, for developers to deliver high quality content uh, in a very secure fashion, uh, speeds up that innovation and allows uh, companies to actually scale faster, which we think is increasingly important. And also in keeping with how we see multi-decade changes occurring in that, that energy landscape, uh, we took a holding in a company called ITM Power, a, a UK company which designs and manufactures electrolyzers. So the hydrogen gas that an electrolyzer generates uh, can be used either as a chemical feedstock or it can be consumed in a fuel cell to yield back energy and water. And with the declining cost of renewable energy and that real sort of mounting imperative across society and real sort of genuine buy-in to, to net zero commitments, uh, we see the prospect for the much heralded hydrogen economy being really transformed over the coming decades. Uh, and most importantly, I think electrolyzer derived hydrogen, green hydrogen, uh, is likely to be the most viable route for many heavy emitting industries to decarbonize uh, industries like aviation, marine and, and, and steel manufacture. So while the backdrop for companies or indeed the, the, the performance of the trust has not been easy the past year, uh, that really hasn't hindered our ability to get out there and find and nurture really interesting ideas. And, and I, I don't think that should surprise because we are actively looking for companies that are innovating, trying to move the world forward uh, we believe in doing that, we're concentrating on, on a subset whose own actions will be the greatest determinants of their success or failure. And the innovative spirit and that entrepreneurial drive that really distinguishes these companies, uh, that, that hasn't been impacted negatively by what the world has been through the last couple of years. One observation that we are keen to highlight is that we increasingly first come across the companies that we want to own whilst they are still private. Uh, indeed, of the 16 new holdings taken in the, the trust year to the end of October 21, uh, six of them were private companies when our original investment was made. In the past, shareholders have given us the authority to invest up to 15% of the company's total assets uh, at the time of initial investment in, in unlisted in, in investments. Uh, and at the company's year end to the end of October 21, uh, the portfolio weighting in private companies was just a little short of 11%, uh, spread across 12 companies. Uh, and as part of the upcoming February AGM, uh, the board is seeking shareholder approval to increase that authority up to 25%. As really both the board and, and we, the investment managers, are of the view that private companies are increasingly a relevant and exciting part of our, our objective here at EWIT. Uh, we really explore the rationale for that in the, the annual report, and I would direct you there if, uh, if that's really of interest. Um, the existing private companies th that we've invested in, I think, have created significant value in aggregate and they act as a real source of positive differentiation for the trust. And we think it's important to really retain that flexibility to invest a greater portion of the trust assets in these private companies really as the opportunities arise. So hopefully that's given you a run through of what we've been up to over the past year. And I, again, I thank you for your time and, and your interest in the Edinburgh Worldwide Investment Trust.